Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I am very excited for today's video. Hold up, there is a dog literally yodeling. Moving on, for today's video, I'm diving into how I organize my Google Calendar from color coding to time blocking and task batching and just overall how I approach planning my week. Not to be dramatic, but the things I'm about to share with you today have actually been life-changing for my business and also for my mental health. The reason I love talking about productivity and efficiency is because I think it's all connected to self-care. Of course, when you approach productivity from a place of equating it to your self-worth, then that's not healthy. But when you approach productivity from a place of self-care, saying, I deserve to set boundaries, create a structure so I can more freely show up for my work, get the stuff done that matters, and then walk away at the end of the day and be able to live my life. And I really hope that there are some major light bulb moments and takeaways from this video. Anything that you're vibing with, please let me know in the comments. Make sure to hit subscribe, like the video, all that really helps. So without further ado, let's do this. Welcome to my Google Calendar. This is a little glimpse at what it looks like. Today is actually the 12th, but I'm going to start on a fresh week so you can kind of see everything filled in. So the first thing you might notice right off the bat are the colors. This is one of the most important first steps in my opinion because the default colors that come with Google Calendar are really loud and overwhelming. It just kind of felt like my calendar was screaming at me. So I took the time to find a bunch of different colors that complemented one another and it took a lot longer than you would expect. So that's why I'm gonna share with you all of the hex codes that I use so that you can also use them and not go through the trouble of trying to find 12 different colors that complement one another. If you hit the three dots here, you can see all the default colors that it comes with, but all you need to do is click on add custom color and you would just copy and paste the hex code that I am sharing with you. The next thing that I do to organize my calendar is to set up multiple color-coded calendars that are treated more like labels. So as you see here, we've got meetings, admin work, Andrew and Jules calendar, that's my shared calendar with my partner, my husband. We've got a calendar for birthdays, computer stuff, content creation, and I'll explain all of this in a bit. Deadlines, get shit done, hold, home bodies, that's my online shop, personal to-do list stuff, self-care, task lists, and then I have Truebelly, our app, and then this is a default Google calendar. I can't delete it, unfortunately, so that's why some of these are unchecked. I have lots of different calendars and they really act as labels and this really goes hand in hand with how I time block. That brings me to my third point, which is setting up time blocks so that you can task batch. A week in my life, we've got potato days on Mondays and Wednesdays and creation days on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Fridays are my get shit done planning days. My potato days are color coded in purple, which is my computer stuff. So this just means that I'll be on my computer writing, I'll be editing, I'll be recording voiceover or something, and it doesn't require me to do my hair, do my makeup or anything like that, potato days. Tuesdays and Thursdays are when I'm filming and I'm also taking meetings. You don't want your meetings to be scheduled on your potato days because nothing worse than having to get dressed and look presentable when you were just planning to potato out that day. Now, I think a lot of people get confused with time blocking versus actually adding tasks to your calendar. You'll see that my time blocking is in a very pastel, light color, and then my actual tasks are written down in this kind of beige color. So you can see, I can check and uncheck. These are tasks that I've written down that, are, that I'm going to be doing within my time blocks. Now, something that's really important for me is that I'm able to clearly see my deadlines. It's this bright yellow, label and so I know, okay, Friday, that video is going live. Friday at four, my newsletter is due. If I have a partnership due, let's just say I have a Reebok post due and I will see, okay, post Reebok at 10 a.m. Same thing with meetings. My meetings are a darker blue color because I'm able to see, I actually have a meeting scheduled within this meeting block. So the best way to come up with your task batching and time blocking is to just get out a good old, 
notebook and pen and just start writing out what your reoccurring tasks are and just try to figure out what tasks are like-minded. How can I group these together? How can I plan this so that it makes more sense? The point of task batching is so that you're able to stay in that flow state. So moving on from time blocking, something that I think is really helpful is to just know hot keys. So right now my calendar is on a week view, but if I wanna go on a day view, I just hit the D button on my keyboard and now I see the day view. If I wanna go back to the week view, I hit W on my keyboard and that's the week. If I wanna see the month, I hit M for month. And I just think it's really nice to just be able to quickly toggle between week, day, and month. Another really helpful hotkey is C for create. So if I want to create a new meeting, I can just quickly do that. Another thing that I think is really helpful that I don't think enough people utilize is adding a secondary time zone. I'm based in Austin, but I have Lauren who's on my team who's based in Australia. And so because there's such a big time difference, I like to be able to see you know, what time it is for her so that if I'm emailing her with something important or I'm trying to schedule a meeting for us, I know that it's at a reasonable time. Instead of trying to always calculate the time difference, you'll just be able to see that at a glance here. And so the way you do that is by hitting settings and then it'll come right up here and it'll just say display secondary time zone. So you just pick whatever time zone you would like. And I've got Sydney. And my final, final tip for Google calendars is if you have a partner, it's really a good idea to have a calendar with them because that way you can see what you both need to be responsible for doing. So for us, we have dog training this month and that takes up our mornings. And then I also have reminders for Luna and Clover's heartworm medicine. So that's something that I put on our calendar so that one of us can do it. I think sharing a calendar with Andrew has been really important because we've been able to make sure we manage expectations and do things that we say we're gonna do. All right, so that is my calendar. I hope it makes sense. I know that when you're looking at somebody else's calendar, it can be a little bit confusing, but I really hope that this wasn't confusing and that it was clarifying. With that said, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you would like to see from me but this was super fun to walk you through and i will see you all in the next video bye for now